First, as a professor, I teach and mentor students, both bachelors, masters and PhDs, and even staff. I teach a subject called uh, Pharmacognosy and Natural Medicine Science. I also conduct research. Uh, I do research still in the field of Pharmacognosy and Natural Medicine, our African medicines, to find out what they do, how safe they are, how they can be made converted into medicines that are useful. So, so apart from academic work, I also do administrative work in Barora. I'm the head of pharmacy department, the department you are in. I had about 15 people, 15 staff, and I oversee that they are doing their work of teaching, examining, and conducting research. I'm also the deputy center lead of Farm Biotechnology, Christian Medicine Center program, and the principal investigator. In other words, the technical part of the project or the program is planned and implemented by me. I also supervise and mentor research students at PhD, master's and undergraduate level and we publish what we, what we are our findings <clears throat> but we also uh, use the knowledge to the community. So the other thing I do also is community service. I like teaching people in uh, churches, in rotary clubs, on radio, on TV about health and natural medicines we have in Uganda and other parts of the world so they can know them and use them because we share knowledge, I teach them what I know, they also teach me what they know. I like learning from old people and herbalists because as a scientist, I can understand their work easily and interpret it. We also invite them to come to the university here to share their knowledge. Uh, the herbalists come. They teach us things which are not in the textbook. When the project began, it was very hectic because I was running most of the things myself. But along the way, I've trained people whom I delegate they work too. Like now here in this department, Professor Tam Kong, who came under the project, Farm Biotech project, handles postgraduate academic work. So I don't have to put a lot of time there. I have now Dr. Jai, I think he's in the laboratory. He helps me with the training students in the laboratory analysis and running uh, tests in the laboratory. So through training people and delegating them, it has relieved me now. But the first four years were very hectic. So I think I've learned that in life, mentor people and let them help you to carry the load. The, pro the objective of this project was to build critical human resource and research capacity to address the health challenges the disease Africa faces, which hinders us from developing. Under the Farm Biotech project, considering that we are laying the foundation, in other words, we are putting things together from the start, I can say I'm proud of what we have achieved uh, greatly. Uh, one, we have managed to attract students from 11 countries in Africa for masters and PhD. And uh, we have managed to train those students to share with them the skills we had. But also not only us, we invited professors from Sudan, India, the USA, Ethiopia, Kenya, Cameroon, to come and also contribute to student training. As I speak right now, we have graduated over 15 PhD students in this field. We are yet to graduate another, another 17 or 18. That means we're about, about 33 PhDs graduated, will be graduated under this program. That's a very big achievement for human resource. We have graduated over 60 master's students right now in this field. So those are some of the people that I can say I'll pick something for me and others and they will continue what we, have been, what we have been doing. Those students now are taking up positions in academia. So there are several of them who have taken up university teaching, which is, means that they are going to continue training other people. Even in Uganda here, we have Dr. Jai, we have Dr. Kagwa in, in Makerere and several others. So they have entered into academia and they are teaching. Then there are those in the industry, like Dr. Nyase, Dr. Ra Madam Rashida Kagwa and several others who are in the factory right now. We have now, Farm by Track has been the first program to have university courses accredited internationally. We have three international accredited programs now in MAS, meaning that students from MAS can go to any part of the world and not again be cross-checked, is their transcript worth our university or not. University has gotten equipment from this project. If you go to our labs, the equipment are there for research, for medicine manufacture at training level. 
This university now is actually making medicines. Although they are still at some at pilot level, but they are making medicines, and those medicines in five, five years' time may go into the market and benefit the community. Under the farm by track, we attracted more funding that has come in to support the university, but also support the economy. You know, when scientists write papers and they win projects, they bring in dollars. Those dollars build our economy, actually, although they are not recognized, but they are contributing to foreign earning. So, those, so we have several people who are attracted again under farm by track. We now have scientists who are developing medicine and natural products. If you go to our factory, to our lab, you'll find them there. Those products are contributing to the economy right now. Let me give you an example of Covidex, for example, another product I developed. The farmers sell towards the raw material, meaning that the farmer is earning. The one who grows the leaves, the one who grows the, the trees, is earning. The people who transport those raw materials to the industry are earning. You get it, eh? The people we employ at the industry, because of the research we did, are also what? Earning. Ugandans are benefiting from those products to, 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 to cure their diseases. It means that their health is what? Improving, so they can work, they can be productive. We are even now beginning to export some of those products. We send some to Cameroon. I got some orders from Namibia. Some got, even some go uh, in, in bags to Canada, to USA. But they are not going for free. Someone is paying dollars to the, what? To the country. So honestly speaking, this has just been five years, and maybe plus previous years of, of work. But we can see that this investment has done a lot. If it was not, been, if it was not, be, if it was not because of the farm project, I would have failed to prove to the world that this product is useful. So it would have been there, but without evidence. But at least now there's evidence from the lab that is safe and that can kill COVID virus as we wait for clinical trials to be done as they want it anyway. So without the project, that wouldn't have been successful. Now imagine if there was no COVID X. Or it was there, but it was not brought to the world because of what the scientists did in Barra University. Would have, would have maybe, many people would have died. I meet many people who tell me, Professor, I'm alive because I took COVID-19. I was on oxygen, I was dying. When it dropped in my mouth and nose, I sneezed and I began breathing. Maybe those people would have what? Would have died. So honestly, as a nation, I can see that we have benefited from these five years of the project. So the field of pressure medicine, natural medicine has not been good, well developed because we do not have scientists who are focused on them. But now we have scientists at masters and PhDs who have interest in the field and they are putting their energy. So in five, ten years' time, we're going to begin seeing things coming up. I think COVID is a good example. COVID is a good example of scientists focusing on our own medicines and developing them. And at a given time, they can be the, the national savior. But one of the challenges, I think, is trust. The industry thinks that the university don't have anything good. When you go and say this product is, is good, for this disease, they're going to say, how much money are you making? Now, at the university level, I'm not yet selling. But they're asking me, how much money are you making? Because you want to invest based on the money what? I'm making. So the industry needs to know that if this product is good, show me the data. Then they take it up and commercialize it first. So our industry looks for already what's making money. They don't want to invest in it, in developing the product and, and, and make money later. That's one thing. The other thing also is that uh, most of the people who are in teaching moved from classroom to classroom. I was a student, I passed very well my, my university degree, I was picked up as a sun lecturer and I joined the university teaching. I have never practiced, I have not worked in industry. So industry is strange to them. For me, I did not start by joining lecturing. I first went into working as a pharmacist, I went into research, uh, in means of health, I interact with the community, interact with industries. That's how it was easy for me. I was doing applied research. See, applied research, if you go like to narrow, they are doing applied research. They have the gardens, they are planting, they are watching the crops, they are harvesting. That's applied research. So the same thing also with, with chemotherapy, it was more applied research I was doing. When I came to university, it was easy to conduct applied research. But also I think that uh, professors have not yet learned that uh, there's more money in inventing something and commercializing it as opposed to winning grants and look for another grant to win, look for another grant to win. Because I think the money I made from covid -X, I will never get it all my life working in the university. But it was one invention that turned out to be very, economic, very useful in terms of for myself and for the nation. So I think that mindset change is important. Actually, use your knowledge from lab, from books, to create something. Let that something help people. When something useful, people will buy it. 
whether a textbook or a, or, a, or, a, or a process or a product, people will buy it. And when they buy it, then you earn more money. So I think putting the knowledge into application is very important. If you look at patented inventions all over the world, they are not patented under the university or, or under, under, under an institution. It is an individual who the patent is the name of the individual, but address of organization. That's how it is. So, patents belong to individuals. But the organization in which you work in has a right if the work was done in that university. And they look at how much was contributed by your time at the, in the lab in the university. So, that's why in some countries, the individual owns like 80% of the rights of the patent. And then the university owns 20%. But in Africa, they want it the reverse. The university takes 80%, you who did the work, only 20%. That's unfair. So our policy needs to be changed so that it favors, it promotes people to create things, knowing that they're going to benefit even the children benefit. Also, also the, thing, the thing I'm trying to encourage universities to do is to encourage professors to have time to open up their private industries or practice places. Why is that important? Because if I go out and create an industry that's going, that's going to re employ a thousand people, that's going to export the products, that's very big for the country, more than you holding somebody just keeping it, blocking it from going. So I think we need to introduce that policy whereby whether Guang is here or not, government must continue to support the centers of excellence. Because five years was the planting of the seed. We have already seen some fruits from the seed. How about another five years? How about another ten years? What can we see? I want to get a chance to inform government that <clears throat> in this country we do not plan long-term projects, which is dangerous. We just have five years, three years, that one ends, another one comes, three, five years, that one ends. How can you have a track record if you do things in bits and, and pieces? We need to have a program that stays for 10 years. If you go to America, they have research that are going on for 50 years. They can show you a trail of things and they can, with confidence, predict what will happen in 10 years' time. But here, I go to any university. You cannot find programs that have run for 30 years. So how can you discover new things if you don't have, you don't have a trend to follow? So Farm by Truck is not a good example for us to continue building. 20, 20 years from now, we may produce a product for the entire world to actually accept. So I want to encourage government that even if World Bank doesn't give us the money, government must find money to continue this program. So they continue to run and continue to gain more knowledge and experience and provide solutions to Ugandans. Because without, without science and technology from universities going to industry, we cannot develop, full stop. No nation can develop without science and technology going to, from university to, to industry. Because industry do not conduct research. Universities conduct research, develop products and services, then industry takes them up. That's how a nation develops. So I think as a centre, we are, we are proud of what we have achieved. What we have done is there can be seen in terms of students, publications, products, the lab, the equipment, and also nationally our name can be found in different uh, publications or, or, or websites, so we were visible. Even when funding ends, the centre will not end. Why? Because we're already getting students who are applying to come here to do their pro the programs we initiated. Actually, the number is even increasing now of students who are applying to come, meaning that the programs are useful to the students. Number two, we have continued to use the, the, the infrastructure that we put in place to win grants from other funders. Recently, we won another grant from uh, BioInnovate Africa. Uh, so that grant is going to help us recruit PhD students, master's students, to work with the industry to develop medicine for malaria. Malaria treatment, not prevention design, but treatment. So, we, we, so more funding, we can still win more funding. Then the centre can continue to survive. However, for core research to be done and, and more training to be done, it would be good for uh, more funding from government or, or whichever sources.